plane. Yeah. You have the outer feather, yeah. inner feather, and then inner cone. Okay. What we're using it for is a neutral plane, so we want to bring the inner feather to the inner cone, and once they marry up, that's typically a neutral plane. Okay. So carburizing, neutral, yeah. that's equal parts okay. fuel and oxygen. Okay. An oxidizing flame is more parts oxygen than the fuel. So you'll be welding, but you'll also be cutting at the same time. That's not good. Okay. Okay. Get comfortable, keep your, uh, the gentlemen breathe through their uh, diaphragm. Um, that way your chest, guys are going to breathe through their chest, their arms will go up and down. So you have to be a little ladylike tonight and breathe through your diaphragm and keep your arms straight. So anywhere we want to tack, I only want to worry about where it's touching. I don't care where the rest of the material is. If I want to tack right at the end, which I want to do, um, this could be five inches apart. Get it as close as you can, but don't concentrate on oh it's okay Did you, don't concentrate on trying to line up the whole scene because mm -hmm. that's not where the weld is going to be okay so uh, to gauge the amount of heat required i should be able to bring a molten state let's say three seconds and if it's too long mm -hmm. uh it'll still do it but you, then you start to jitter if you're too quick at it, one second you haven't got enough time to focus on, on the joint. <clears throat> You'll also notice that when I'm looking straight down comfortably, I'm looking below my lens. Mm -hmm. When I go to weld, I tip my head down and I want to adjust my helmet. So I'm only looking through the first couple inches. That way it's none of this and you can always see the joint free and clear. Okay, mm -hmm. So that's what you need to do. So we'll come down that inner cone about an eighth of an inch consistently off the surface of the material. If you get it too close, that's called impingement, and you'll get popping. If, it, if it's up here, yeah. all you're going to do is heat the surrounding. Okay, okay. you're making yeah. soup. Yeah. Okay. A little long. Okay. Now, watch when I pull straight out. Mm -hmm. That outer feather acts like your shielding gas. It's burning up the oxygen while that's at molten state. If I pull away too fast, oxygen gets in and you'll get uh, porosity, and that's not good, okay? You choose not to do that. So that took probably four seconds, which yep. is okay mm -hmm. on a complete surface. We're doing two edges, yep. so that edge is gonna melt up fairly quick. Okay, so I'm right handed, I typically put my right foot forward, my left leg up or comfortable and then walk along. <clears throat> so my tacks, how fast can I tack? If the panel lines up and the fitment's good, tack right away. If it's not, let it rest and then if it starts to rest as the weld cools, it'll shrink and these two bodies will come together. One may this one's fixed. This is the operator. It may slightly go up or slightly down. You just have to manipulate the steel back and forth and up and down to get the next section ready. Okay. Something like this I try and do within the next heat affected zone. So that blue dot is the heat affected zone. Okay. So if it's tacked here, I want to go to the edge of it or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. So something like this i'm about an inch apart <clears throat> if i'm doing a big panel no lift edge i might go two inches and then i split the two tacks in half again so i'm still two inches apart okay, okay. but you go do you go like four inches down and then come back no or no no okay. one direction only okay keep it in a rhythm okay. so if i start with an inch tack mm -hmm. I keep an inch apart. Okay. The first tack gets split in half again. Well, guess what? They're still an inch apart. Okay, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where it gets tricky. 
if they're two inches apart, <clears throat> and then you split the first one, they're still two inch increments. Mm -hmm. Here's where you have to get thinking. Once you split the third one, you'll have to miss an open space and go still go two inches apart. Mm -hmm. So think about it. We're methodically keeping the spacing two inches apart, but eventually they'll all be half inch. But usually I don't tack any farther than three quarters of an inch apart to do my straight weld. That way I can be consistent on the two surfaces mating up, whether it be a complete butt joint with no tipped edge. Keep one thing in mind, this is fusion welding without filler rod, when most of, as possible. But it's still fusion with rod. That's what people misinterpret. It's still fusion welding, mm -hmm. whether it's gas or TIG. It's fusion without rod or it's fusion with rod. That's the terminology. Okay? All right. Let's get at it. Who's rocking my boat? Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to rock enough. Okay. That tiny little tack, it's not a big piece. Once it cools, it, theoretically, it should hold it. <clears throat> so, the heat here goes 360 degrees. When you have an edge, it wants to burn back. That's why everybody has a little nugget on the end of the weld, on the starting or finishing of a weld. So just keep that in mind. So ultimately, when you want to when it's a tipped edge, let's say if it's 30 thou material, you want the bottom two edges to touch. You want that full metal thickness exposed. So when I heat it, those two surfaces have to touch, and then once it's heated up, they fuse together, no filler required. So if you do burn a hole, filler rod handy when we go to finish welding through. Mm -hmm. But until then, we're just using the material on itself. <clears throat> okay. Okay. You notice there's no waving motion, mm -hmm. no yeah. figure eight, yeah. no jag or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. My tip the flame itself is wider than the joint so if you're fairly accurate you just have to go straight in do the joint and come back out mm -hmm. okay. when tacking you want all the heat into where you're placing it so it's pretty near perpendicular yeah. and it's favoring both sides at once okay, okay. Yeah. Um, when you go to weld you want to give it some lead angle and preheat ahead of you okay, okay. so the what ultimately what you're looking for is the heat affected zone to be equal to both panels. Okay, I'm going to show you what I meant by shrinkage. You guys want to stand up. That's about 3 sixteenths apart. Mm -hmm. As that's cooling, that weld shrinks. <clears throat> and if, as long as it doesn't bind up here, which it's already made contact, this one's starting to lift a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's going to pull in just a little bit more, yes. Yeah, it's starting, it's binding there, so it's lifting up. Now to compensate for that, just don't pull straight down. 
if it starts to really bind, all you do is tip the material away from that and drop it. There's no effort there at all. Okay. I'm going to let that cool off. I pulled that one down a little bit. <clears throat> Pliers over the hand yet? Yeah, they are. <laughs> you seen that, did you? Okay. So for the most part it looks fairly even. Okay. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing people forget to do is remove the oxide. So you want to wire brush the top. See the little flakes on the top? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That oxide will let's say the material melts at what, Craig? Two thousand. Yeah, eighteen fifty to two thousand. So the oxide will is elevated probably over three thousand. Okay, so you have to remove as much oxide as you can. That way the puddle will consistently flow and the speed at which you travel will be consistent. And I do to cool the room temperature and those sort of cooling. Yeah. Oil and oil and oil and oil. Yeah, just let it okay. the ambient air cool it off. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. I always have a little justice in my hand, just in case. I tack right to left. They're consistent. Okay. okay. The heat affected zone is consistent as well. Mm -hmm. Once you start, you get the puddle and push right through those tacks and don't stop. Okay. Wife calls you for supper or whoever calls you for supper. I'll be there in a minute. Okay. Any questions? No, yeah. No, <laughs> so, again, breathe through your diaphragm, keep the torch. You want a 30 degree push. If, it, if it's going well, you can give it another 10 degrees. And if it's going too slow, bring it back to 20 or 30. Okay? So, whatever you're comfortable with and how, jo how well the joint lines up. Craig, don't rock the boat. So there's minimal stars or flashes yeah, coming up. Yeah. So that would be a little bit of oxide in the joint or impurities in the surface. Mm -hmm. 
We're coming up to that save. Right about there. Don't forget to breathe while you're doing that, or you'll mm. pass out. <laughs> okay, you'll also notice it's fairly flat. Yeah. It's, okay, just hang that out for me. That makes a difference <laughs> if it's different, sort of smaller torch there. 